Well, hello everybody and welcome to Leicester's The Place podcast. Uh, myself and Matt are absolutely delighted to welcome an old teammate of ours, the wing wizard himself, Stevie Guppy. Welcome, Steve. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Good man. I, I believe you've travelled a long, long way to be here today. I have. I have indeed. No, I um, live in Nashville, Tennessee now, over in uh, the USA. Um, but obviously, when I realised that you two were interested in talking to me, I was over here like a shot. <laughs> so, uh, no, got here yesterday, so uh, a little bit jet-lagged, but I can't think of uh, two better people I'd rather <laughs> be with to, uh, to bring me out, drag me out of this jet-lag. Well, it's a great start to the show, so this, we should fly through this, Matt. Yeah, exactly. You say you're pleased to be here. He might change your mind a little bit down <laughs> yeah. the line. We'll see how we go, mate. Oh, we'll play it by you. First yeah. of all, genuinely good to see you. Absolutely. Too long, and uh, we'll get yeah. together outside of the podcast as well and have a little catch up, I'm sure. Yep. But um, as Tag says, yeah, travelled a long way right across the, the Atlantic. But you, you mentioned there Nashville. One, how did you end up there? And two, what's life like over there, both in a yeah. football sense and also away from the club? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll start with what it's like. I mean, we were like wife and two kids, as you know. Um, we, we arrived in Nashville probably three years ago now, it goes so quickly. Yeah. But we arrived just in time for, uh, you know, COVID to hit. So, yeah. uh, you know, that I was... I remember that, being in touch with you. That was, that was nice. Um, so, you know, really, we, so we were lucky in some respect. We got out there and then obviously COVID hit, lockdown. So I was, we were the same as everyone else, really. We just sort of living at home and... Um, the football's still going on, though. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't. Um, you know, we had the, the large periods where it was completely shut down um, and we were just doing, you know, it was like everyone else, we were on little, like doing these Zoom calls and being set tasks for no apparent reason. You know what it's like. Um, and then, but then as we started to go out of it, it was, we could train the players one at a time. So we were like the other side of the pitch and you'd set things up. Perfect for you. You love a bit yeah, of no, that, yeah. didn't it? It was, it was, uh, so it was like, well, it was, it was just crazy times, you know. Are you saying like, gobs that? If you had left it like a week later, that you, you wouldn't have got over to Nashville and, and missed out yeah. on the chance there. I don't know. Is, is the honest answer that I, I don't know? But it, it just sort of, it just sort of, you know, obviously it crept up on everyone, didn't it? The, the yeah. COVID thing. <clears throat> so, so that was that was obviously our our, our first thought or our first things back in America. Um, now, I suppose I have to say, I, I played for DC United in 1996, something like that, mm -hmm. just towards the end of my career. So. And that was my really introduction into MLS and what it's like over there. And, uh, and you know, we loved it. We loved it. 96? 2006. 2006. Yeah, yeah, 2006. What am I yeah. about? What That's what life in America does. Cut that. Yeah. Cut that with <laughs> so, um, yeah, God, yeah, 96. What was I doing then? Um, I might have been here. On your way to Leicester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I had, in like, 2006, we uh, had a little period out there um, and then came back to England and, and bounce around for a few years as you do. But then um, I managed to get a, it's actually, Muzzy is it's golf day. I was playing in that um, and I was, I was walking down the fairway and going down the other way was uh, the ex um, Jim Melrose, the ex yeah, yeah, yeah. scout here. Yes. Yeah. And you know, Jim, like I was seeing, it was, like, it was like, I was walking one way, yeah. I was walking one way down the, down the, old, um, down the old golf course there and, and he was walking the other way down the fairway. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm just... He played out there, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. I didn't realise. I'm like, I, and I, I wouldn't mind getting in the coaching. He goes, oh, I, I know a guy who's just buying a club, Rochester Rhinos. Obviously now, obviously Jamie Vardy's... But, yes. So Rochester Rhino, I never heard of him at that time. Uh, he said, like, yeah, Rochester, you fancy going out there playing? I was like, I don't want to play. I want to coach. But Jim being Jim, he's walking down, don't worry, I'll get you back playing. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to play. I want to coach. <laughs> And I uh, never thought any more of it. And then two months later, I got a call saying, I hear you want to start playing. You know, it, it was like guy Matt Ford from Rat Rochester Rhinos. Anyway, I ended up being a player assistant coach over there for a year. Um, and that really was the introduction into coaching and obviously playing uh, and working in, um, in America. So um, at the same time, a good friend of mine, Gary Smith, who we played with at Wickham Wanderers, was just went to Colorado Rapids under, under the banner of Arsenal because they were going to set up an academy there. Anyway, long story short, it didn't happen, but he ended up getting the manager's job there because the manager was having a rough time and he took over, did really well. And at the end of my season at Rochester, um, he, he called me up and I, I went and joined him. 
stopped playing full time and, and was his assistant um, at Colorado in 2008, 2009. Yeah. So we had like <clears throat> three years there, won the MLS Cup, um, which was fantastic. So really what I'm trying to say is I've been, I've been back and forth to America on and off for the last you know, like 15 odd years, or whatever, and yeah. it wasn't planned. You know, I've been there and then um, um, Atlanta Silverbacks and, and obviously now, now at Nashville. So um, for whatever reason. It's just boring old Nashville FC, isn't it? it uh, yeah, it's that's not, right. That's right. No yeah. silverbacks no, or winos no, no, or whatever. Or... No, we, there's, it's, it's, it's funny. If you, hopefully you come out now. Obviously COVID done now, hopefully. And so people are, you know. invite cups. Yeah. There's always an open <laughs> invite for you, Matt. <laughs> the Grand Old Opry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, but it was, um, so anyway, so my, that was, you know, to answer your question, that's how I really came to be out there. Um, but what it's like, obviously things have calmed down now. Um, in, yeah, what's in life Nashville? like in Nashville compared to, say, yeah. living in England? You know, for obviously the majority of your life, being yeah. involved in football, what's the cultural differences, New would Stetson you say? flying around? Yeah, I mean, it obviously is, you know, deep south, I guess, uh, Nashville. Um, so, you know, we were talking about off air, weren't we? But... Um, I, I mean, what are the neighbours like? The neighbours are really nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's, it's actually a really, really good community feel there. Um, yeah, the street where, where we live, we've got you know, about four or five families we're really quite close with. Um, so, you know, like it was, um, what did they have in that week? We were talking about it. What was it called? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, mine went there. Um, so they, that's, that's obviously really big in America, obviously. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, it was just like open house. So we went over, had a meal over in one one family. Then you go over there and have a dessert, someone else's family. Just so it's really, really cool. So, um, you know, my wife and kids have really settled in there. They love it. Um, well, that's, so, uh, that's a bonus, isn't it, really? I was, I was going to ask how the kids and the, and the, and the wife yeah. and well, enjoy living out there. Really, really important, obviously. So they, they've settled in I, and I just work every day. So. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect right. scenario. I have, I have zero life. Yeah. But um, no, it's it's, it's it's quite a religious aspect over there, is it? It is, it is, it is. You know, and and you know, and that that's, you know, that's fine. You know, it, it's but they, you know, they're looking for little differences. Like we have a um, a club chaplain at Nashville, who plays quite a big role in in a lot of. I don't know if he picks the team, but <laughs> maybe he does. But um, so there's a lot a lot of players, uh, are, you know. Are, Pretty religious, and 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 they 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 you know, have lots of Bible studies and things like that with with the chaplain. Um, I don't remember you you guys doing any of that when I was at Leicester. <laughs> no, but um, you used to go to church on a Sunday. But I'm sure you did. You know, you didn't pray. Well, there was a lot of confession <laughs> for me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You would have been in there sins. quite a while, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but they um so they have the little differences, I guess. You know, they yeah. they. You see yourself you know, settling into... over there, staying over there well, as a family. Just just sign a new. Two-year deal, so I, I guess you that know. Means, uh, that means not a lot. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, good, you've done well, though, haven't you? Between the, the, the two, it has, it has gone well. It has gone well with it. With, you know, the Nashville, uh, obviously, a new franchise three years ago. That's why I went there. They were in the the USL, which is the league below, um, and they were obviously got the the MLS franchise. So when Gary Smith, who was at Colorado, with you know got the job there, he um, obviously wanted to get the band back together. Um, and um, and that's how it how it came to be. I was I was working at the time at Nottingham Forest with obviously Martin O'Neill. Yeah. And when that came to an end, you've been around um, a bit on the quiet, haven't mm. you? I, it, it's funny. We've my Rianne, well, my wife always reminds me. I think we've moved something like twenty <laughs> times in the last twelve, fifteen years. Like twenty yeah. odd. I think it's even more than that. Um, so yeah, we are constantly. Uh, I very rarely unpack the house fully. Just, just a few vital boxes yeah. and they leave everything in the garage. They're trying, to say, they're trying to say there's a few skeletons still left in the cupboard. Well, I wouldn't go that far, Jerry. <laughs> but um, no, that, that's the way life has gone since, since I've played. I, I guess even as a player, you, you know, you've got to be ready to move around. I'm yeah. rocking up at Stoke City and uh, you were there. Yeah. So uh, that, was, that was nice to see. You, you mentioned uh, quickly uh, MLS winning the cup. Yes. Uh, some achievement, by the way, but also you keep this quiet. Got presented your trophies or your medals by none other than certain Barack Obama at the White House. Oh yeah, Is this correct. Uh, well, that, that's you know, and I think that's that's some of the really nice things. I mean, when back in 2006, when I went to uh, DC United, I, I really 
you know, and you guys will, uh, will understand. You, when you've been in the game, you know, 15 odd years in England, you, and you start slipping down the leagues as you get older. I just really wanted a change, you know, mm. and, and, and DC really offered me that, although the manager there at the time was an absolute lunatic. Um, that was, that was in, incredible. But, but that aside, you know, just the, just the way of living in a different country and, yeah. and, and sampling that was exactly what, what I really was looking for at the time. And, yeah, for whatever reason, just, you know, find myself back and forth um, the States and England ever since. So not planned, but that's the way it has, has panned out. Well, you have <coughs> had a varied playing career. I'll just go through some of the clubs. You started off at Wickham. Yep. Yeah. And then obviously had a short spell at Newcastle. Very short. Then Port Vale. <laughs> we'll come on to that. Yeah. Leicester City, of course, which we're going to come on to. Celtic. Back at Leicester. Yes. For a second time. Then Leeds United, Stoke, Wickham, DC United, Stevenage Borough, and Rochester Rhinos. So a pretty varied career between. Stretched uh, it out some. Stretched it out. out. But. Obviously, we're here to predominantly talk about your time at Leicester City, Steve, and uh, you know, your memories of playing with the likes of me and the Swamp Monster here. Yes. Uh, so how, how, did, how, did that, how did that come around, that move? I think you were at Port Vale at the time. <coughs> yeah. When the move came about. It was, it was um, you know, as a, as a right bounce around a little bit as a, as a young player, as, as you do. And um, yeah, I was at Port Vale. We were in the championship at the time. Yeah. Um, Just to cut you off there, Cups, what I'm saying about bouncing around <laughs> as a youngster. I mean, like, there's a few bits and pieces here that, that got written down there, and I half knew little bits. Yeah. We had a sort of similar yes. uh, foundation yes. stage, shall yes. we say, of our career, didn't we? I and think, I think a lot of us did. Flitted in and out. Yeah, but we didn't go the traditional route no. of, say, boys, boys and girls now. Had, in this modern era, you know, through the academy pretty much from a young age, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. We flitted and dillied and dallied around that, but also mucked around a little bit or just did our own thing. Yeah. He was on a building site, I was on a building site as well before we became <laughs> professionals. Just touch on that quickly before we get on to the list. No, I, I think it's, it's, you know, this was funny talking about my career. I'm like, Cheers, oh, Matt. He's I just think... caught me up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tay. Where were no, we no, going no, <laughs> I think I think half the players at Nashville don't even realise I played. So it is, it's quite quite funny <laughs> talking about my career again. Um, but it, it's it, it is incredible, really. I mean, I was like most kids growing up, you know, obviously obsessed with football. You know, yeah. you know, really, my my dad really started me off um, from the, like the age of six or whatever it was in the back garden, dropping my shoulder, going past him. That was the big thing that he got me doing. Right, I guess like most parents will have like shots, at, you know, in, in goal against your dad and that. We well, did it different, where he just he got me dropping my shoulder, going past him, and and that was really the obsession that started within me of like the art of one v ones and taking players on. Do you think he encouraged you to be oh, that a was, winger? No, one hundred percent, because he was played with a guy you called. Naturally took to. No, he he played with a guy called um, Terry Payne. Yeah. Um, who was a really famous Southampton. England, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and Terry was a fantastic winger for Southampton. Uh, my dad was a goalkeeper, you know, um, yeah. and uh, he played for West Brom. He didn't want me to go and goal, um, and I wasn't tall enough either, I guess. But so, you know, that that was really how how, how I grew up playing that, you know, drop my shoulder and whatever. But then I got to to um, 15, 16, and I didn't grow. I was I was like really small, and mm. not like. The impressive specimen you see before you today. <laughs> I, was, I was really, I was really small, yeah. um, so I had no pace. And all the players I, I was, you know, beating when I was 12, 13, they were all suddenly dominating me. Anyway, so I actually stopped playing football. I retired at 16, wow. for two years. Right. I swear to you, I did not kick a ball for two years. Gone fishing. I went fishing. Yeah. yeah. I caught a lot of carp. <laughs> and um, I no, I did. And and. And it was crazy when you think about it. Yeah. I didn't. I did. So when, when got, you know, I, I know you're lucky enough to have a, you know, do a, um, you know, a scholarship or whatever mm. with a football club. Yeah. I, I, I um, like I say, worked on a building site. I'm a qualified bricklayer. Well, do a quote for you if you want to bargain. Yeah. You yeah, got a qualification. Yeah. Better than it me. Did. Yeah, I, I went I didn't to college. Get that far, mate. I went to college and, and got that. Um, did not kick a ball. So I, you know, it was, and the only reason I started playing again is because my schoolmates started up a Sunday afternoon uh, team 
um, it, uh, down in Southampton, like Division Six, and I only started playing again because um, all my schoolmates were playing. Right. And um, but but then by that time, I didn't realise I'd, I'd I'd shot up and all my pace had come back, whatever a pace I had, um, and it just it just started clicking again. You think working on a building site help you? Maybe. Well, a bit. well I, I tended to skive a lot, to be honest. I wasn't really interested in working too hard. Helped you yeah. become the beefcake that you are. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, it was, uh, maybe, maybe, but I, I think I just sort of, I think it came up to 15, 16 and the pressure of trying to get into Southampton Academy yeah. and, and obviously very, very young mentally as well as physically, um, too much for me. Uh, so I didn't play for two years, like I said. But then once I started playing with my my, my my schoolmates, then then it was it was it all happened so quickly. Where before you know it, I was playing three games a weekend, mm -hmm. and then after the fun came back. The obs right. yeah, the fun came back, but the, the the obsession came as well. So I'd finished work, and then I'd go down to like uh, a place called Fleming Park, a local sports centre, and there was like astroturf pictures with floodlights, and I used to go and practice on my own behind the floodlights, because I had the light there, you know, in the, yeah. winter, in the winter. So yeah, so I was, I was out every evening, as you, you know what I'm like, um, and just, <laughs> just catching up for a lost time, really, and, and then, you know, managed to... Um, That's a trait that... So how did you go from Sunday League to Wickham then? It was incredible. I then moved to a team called Cold and Common. Um, now, you, you, you didn't get paid or anything like that, yeah. but you didn't have to wash your own kit, and it was like, oh, wow. and it was, that was a big, big thing. And you, you get into the dressing room and your, your kit's hung up on the little things, you know. Yeah. And, and um, there must have been about, I don't know, 30 people come and watch. Um, but I was doing okay in and out the first team incredibly. I mean, the year I was there, I was only there one year. We just missed relegation. The year after I left, they won the league. So, um, read into that what you want. But, <laughs> yeah. but it, was, it was incredible. It all came down to one game. And, and you need a lot of luck in life, as we, as we all know. But we played a team called Bashley in a cup. And it was a couple of things. It was a Wednesday night, and we're playing under floodlights. It was like I think it was the first time I ever played under floodlights. Incredibly, and by this point I was 19, mm. and um, I didn't know. But the, the the right back, big lad, I remember him, was um, was was really being watched by a lot of clubs. And I had no idea. I just we just rocked up in a minibus. This is brilliant. Floodlights, amazing. Wednesday night after Get work, washed. so I'd worked, yeah, <clears throat> exactly, I'd worked all day on the building site, got there in the evening, I had a pre-match meal of a, a Mars bar and a can of Coke on the way down, <laughs> which is actually true, um, and I actually, we lost 2-0, but I, I, I must have played pretty well, mm. because the next day my phone, mum and dad's phone rang about 20 times, well. like, like from Southampton, Coventry, Farnborough, and Wickham Wanderers. That's how it started. So were other clubs watching the fella you were up against? Yeah, they're all watching him. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, give him a little bit of a shoe in Jerry. Yeah, you did. And um, yeah, and, and didn't really think anything of it. You know, we lost 2 0, but I was like, wow, that was, that was brilliant. I enjoyed that. Mm. You know, and because you used to like playing against the tall defenders because in fact they, they turned quite slowly. And so um, must have got a few crosses in. Oh, you two aside, yeah, you, right, right, yeah. you two aside, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about normal, normal yeah. defenders. So yeah, that's, that's how it came to be. Um, and I think what really summed it up was years later, I'm playing for Leicester, and we played against Chelsea, and the, um, the fullback I was up against the day we first played Chelsea was Ferrer, I don't know, yeah. little, mm -hmm. Spanish. little Spanish guy. Yeah. And it and worked out that when I was playing Sunday afternoons with my mates in Fleming Park, he was playing for Barcelona. Yeah. Well. You know, and within five, six years, our paths would cross. <clears> and, you know, and that, that, I guess that really... Yeah, to me, summed up. Whip one in with your right foot. Might have happened. You did regularly. Might enough, have happened, didn't you? But but that was that was a crazy thing how how it all came to be. And I think it's worth saying any you know young, young players out there who, who you know don't you know don't you know I I think at 15, 16 you're told you're not good enough and you know and all the rest of it bloody yeah. blah. At you know, five and six they get told they're not good enough. Yeah. These days. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? No, that, <laughs> that is very true. So. You know, I definitely think, you know, players, academies, it still goes on now. They release players way too early. You know, players who haven't had their growth spurts, things like that. You know, and I guess I'm living proof that, you know, if you're going to take a player on, you should keep them until 2021 yeah. because you give them a chance to mature and see, see what they're about. So um, I've no idea. I cannot remember your question now, Tags, but no, no, that, that was it. That's how it all started. Well, I I'm, was about to mention that Tags got his own back and cut me off this time, but... In terms of a trait that went through your career, you mentioned it 
uh, as a relative youngster there, but you know, training on your own, doing 1v1s with your dad. Yeah. yeah. Who's, uh, who was a wonderful man, by the way. No longer with us, sadly, but um, <clears throat> many me good memories. But you've seen your dad in and around the games and stuff. And uh, yeah. But um, yeah, no, that trait of, of 1v1s. But you took that right through your career, didn't you? Yeah. Certainly up to your Leicester days, I know that. Because Dad was his guinea pig when he came to Leicester. Yeah, exactly. He came up against <laughs> us. Let, let me run past you and beat you and make I was you look silly. His guinea pig. Well, I, I regularly, me I regularly talk to um, a, a lot of the players. And, you know, and, and I think the reason I became a coach, really, well, it is the main reason I became a coach, is because, you know, I just carry on this one v one theme. So I'm more of a position specific coach. Yeah. I think my, I, I guess I'm. My actual role is like first assistant, whatever that means, and maybe I make less cups of tea for the head coach than the rest. <laughs> but, but really, you know, um, like keep ball sessions and things like that, you have to do them, but yeah. it's not really your... For me. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to, you know, 1v1s and, and position-specific work, you know, we, we work it every day at Nashville. It's been a big, big part of the, the training methodology, you know, position-specific, and we carried that on through defenders, midfield, attackers, you know, and the, and the theme is to try and encourage, especially young players, try and find out how good you can be. Mm. And you only do that by extra work for me. And, and I tell them all the time about how, how me and you used to, after training, first to five, if you remember. Yeah, absolutely. It's like if either five crosses. And, and I always tell, like, early on, I, was, I did all right against yeah. you. But then, but then, as you you know, got learning. a bit sharper. Yeah. Now you got once you got your arm on me, it was it was good night. You know, yeah. I, it was like you start transferring that weight of yours on me, and and and, and I, I tell the players all the time that 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 sort of story about you know how how we both helped each other. You know, in in absolutely. in um and, well, and encouraging players to do yeah, the same. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have no doubt that it helped me with my feet turning. Like you say, using your arm as a lever, yeah. as a weight against wide players or centre forwards for that matter and trying to put them off balance but without fouling them so a little bit of the dark arts but obviously not not you know giving away fouls. Well, well exactly you guys you know obviously when the in this day and age when and we played wing backs back in the left yeah. day was well, obviously when the ball was out wide sometimes you guys would get dragged out there and you, and, and you know and most wingers we'd be wanting that wanting the centre half to come out of their mm -hmm. comfort zone where obviously we're airily and, and all the rest of it, you boys were magnificent at it. But you know, I felt that, that that work that we did sort of would have helped you where now you actually, when you did get dragged outside, you, you were like, yeah, bring it on. Mm. You know what I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm ready for this. No, no, it was good. Your game as well, dare I say, you know, was quite technically based as well, wasn't it? As a, as a winger, you, you were quick enough, but you weren't lightning, no, were you? No, You know, you weren't going to go rip roaring past fullbacks, you know, week in, week out. No. So you needed to bring that bit of craft and guard, didn't you? I mean, the way you used to dig a cross out with just literally a quarter of a yard, never mind half a yard space, was something quite unique, really. And well, something you've obviously practised. Well, it's... Answer that bit, but also tell me, is it true that you used to, or at times, we've right. had this conversation, right, where are we going with this? you got the cones out the back and you stopped with, did you have a... A game of 1v1 with some random fella in Victoria Park in Leicester. Oh, oh, um, no doubt. No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> On the way no home doubt. from training. I mean, I've been chased by dogs and goodness knows what else down yeah. local parks. I, I always remember, like, when I first signed for Leicester, I, I mean, we'd finished training and then I'd have a bite to eat and then I'd go back out in the afternoon with a bag of balls. I, was, yeah. I remember walking out and Ian Marshall's coming out. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah. And he, like, he just could what, not. For a, uh, extra training, Marcy. No, sorry, yeah. let me rephrase. Surely not. He was coming out of the canteen <laughs> right, to go okay. home. I, I, yeah, I didn't explain myself. Like and you, you know what he's like. And he was just like basically abusing me all the way across. I was walking across <laughs> down the back pitch <laughs> yeah. to the training ground. Get away from him. Get, uh, like, get the other side of it. Yeah. And, and Marcy's Rubbish, like, you know, what are you, doing? <laughs> you know, you can imagine what he was like. Um, and he was just like shocked. But I, I, in, in all honesty, I, I think I needed to do that because it was a chance to obviously carry on doing what I'd always done. I was comfortable doing it, just practicing, wanting to cross balls. And, I, and I, it definitely, obviously, it definitely helped me because, you know, you just go out and maybe a bit of visualising and, and crossing balls, keeping that, that rhythm going of crossing. Mm. Um, so, you know, I had no problems doing it. And you used to stop with your brother and things, though, didn't you? And no, I did. Get him out of the car and I, I, I took randoms him. in Victoria Park. Are we owning up to that one or not? Or? Well, my, not denying it anyway. Were you trying to move trying to think. Huh? Was you, you, when you were, say, try, you know, stopping the car with your brother to go out and 
Was it a new technique you just thought of, or you weren't quite happy with the way you were like we, we, connecting with a ball? Like we were driving or? down the car, and we just all yeah. of a sudden pulled over. And like bold moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, what, what I did is um, he actually moved in with me, and I, 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 I paid him to be my trainer. So he was, he was on a building <laughs> site, and I, was, I matched his building site with money, and he, he moved in with me and my girlfriend at the time, which didn't go down very well. No. Um, just for that, so I could have an ask someone to, um, to, to, to take on. Mm. Um, and he used to train with the youth team during the morning mm -hmm. and then come out with me in the afternoon. And, but it wasn't just that, I did it at Wickham, Port Vale, and, um, and obviously Leicester, even Southwick, I, I, even at 32, 33, I, I, I just did it. Used yeah. to. Um, and um, I, funny, when I, when I signed, signed for Southwick, I was out in the afternoon and Danny McGrain, remember Danny McGrain? Yeah. I mean, he was like 60 that then. Was a legend, he, he was there. And he was like 60 odd, and uh, he might have been, but he had the big beard, grey beard. And he came over like, and he was like, do you want some help? I was like, well, what? Yeah, okay, well, maybe I'll just take you on a bit. He goes, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you need it. He goes, yeah, okay. So I'm like, look at So he's at him, getting thinking, involved. So, oh, brilliant. Yeah, Danny was brilliant. And, and he had this, I remember he had this bad toe. So he actually cut out his boot, so like his, his toe would be <laughs> hanging out of his boot. <laughs> and, but there's things I'm like, oh, he's Okay, I'll take him on. Take him. I couldn't get around him. Yeah. I mean, he was unbelievable. Just I mean, he age. must have been some player. Mm. I mean, it was it was it was actually was quite, quite depressing. Really, but he was he was so good. Um, so yeah, there was so that that's what that's how it came to be. And you know, and I, I think as a as a coach now, when I when I sort of retired, I, was, I sort of tried to think about the whole one v one process and you know what it try and break it down. I think well, if I'm going to be a coach and try and help players, you know, as a coach, you, you, they can't be you and you can't be them. You don't, don't yeah. try and mould yeah. them to what you used to do. But so I, I was trying to work on, 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 on things and work out why. Why was it some days I'd take someone on and it felt okay. And other days, same player, it'd be like pulling teeth. So I'm watching video of myself and then other players, elite players. And, and I, you know, over time I came up with like a bit of a, like 1v1 formula. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I've taken that to every club I've been at and, um, you know, we'll work with the Nashville players to this day just on the art of 1v1s, but the little details, you know, break yeah. it. Because it's difficult, you know, to me, the hardest thing in the game is score a goal. But then after that, I think it's to beat a player. Mm -hmm. That's why you don't see too much of it. Um, and, and, you, and I clear, I, I watch games all the time, you know, the World Cup, whatever, and you can tell players who practice it and players who don't. Because yes. every now and then they, they'll have a light bulb moment and they get by someone. But to consistently do it, I'm not saying I was that player, but I certainly try to work it every day. And you can see the little sharpness. And like I so said, I didn't have the pace. So I had to be, it was almost like a trick yard cross. That was my thing. Yeah. You know, so you had to do it all within a tight area, try and make, put the defender off balance. So angle of approach, placement of the ball, all these little things come into play. And, um, you know, that's what I've, I've, my coaching life has been all about. Yeah, as much as all those details are I would agree with and that's it, man. you uh you produce them regularly throughout your career mm -hmm. I still got a slight suspicion that Martin O'Neill was watching that Danny McGrain 1v1 because yeah. he, he only played about 30 odd times yeah, no, yeah. Celtic couldn't get oh. in the team that regularly over no. that period of time I didn't realize that actually it was uh, it was really really tough I mean you got remember what see team, what we'll what come on to that yeah okay uh, yeah sorry thanks getting ahead of myself right. so around. I'm back in the game now I'm back in the game I'm back in the game, <laughs> I'm back in the game. I'm back in the game. <laughs> so I was on about your time was Martin did Martin sign you for Wickham or yeah, yeah. well no he, actually you know he was there so I, I obviously went to Wickham eventually after that you know like I said after that game um they actually I came and played a, uh, about three or four trial games for him mm -hmm. and then um they said no um originally which is just, it's just amazing how, how it turns out. Yeah. So um, they said, look, we've got to get rid of a few players before we sign anymore. So it was a no. So the season ended. Um, so I was back on the building site working out what I was going to do. And I was going to go to Exeter on trial. They, they showed some interest as well. And I rung them up and said, look, you know, I know I went to Wickham, but will you still have a look? And they went, mm, yeah, OK. Mm. So and I got through the post. I got a thing from Wickham Wanderers saying um, pre-season, like schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can only guess it was a mistake because mm -hmm. I was on their mailing list. <laughs> so I was like, do you know what? I'll go to Wickham and get fit to go to Exeter. So I turned up on a Saturday. And I remember we had a cross-country run around Bisham Abbey for like 45 minutes. And then we had like an hour's game. 
you know, you know, old school pre-season. Yeah. And once again, a bit like the, the Bashley game, I was up against the, the first team right back. I didn't realise. And um, must have gone all right, because I went in to see the manager afterwards. I said, look, thanks very much. You know, all the best for the season. And he's like, where are you going? I'm like, well, we, you know, and he's like, no, no, no. It all changed after that training session. Oh, so, yeah. um, Who was the manager then, you say? Jim Cowman was, uh, was the manager. Okay. Um, so I signed for Wickham after that. So uh, Exeter didn't take that very well, but... Um, <laughs> And then um, been, moved into a club. about with me down in Devon. I was at Torquay at the time. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you just don't know how things are going to pan out. And So anyway, we, I was there. I was in and out of the team. And, you know, it, it was uh, the manager ended up losing his job. And Martin O'Neill came in. And now uh, that's when it all changed. All for, changed. For not just me, all the, all the Wickham players and, Your uh, and the club. Your life would never be the same. It would not. And we're, you know, there's plenty of... Uh, Ups and downs along the way, of course, but but did he you, was. Did you get officially adopted straight away, or did it? All right. Take a little while. <laughs> We're going down that road, are we? <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember listening. I mean, someone Robbie Savage on Talk Sport was was saying that I um, that you couldn't understand why Martin O'Neill loved me so much. It was his words, not mine. You know, and it makes we you laugh. Can, some well, it was almost like well. <laughs> I must have done all right at some point, you yeah, know exactly. what I mean? But obviously, Sav being Sav wouldn't want to, you know, acknowledge that, of course. Well, it was the opposite with Martin and Sav, though, wasn't it? Well... In a roundabout way, Martin was quite critical of Sav, wasn't he? Um, certainly in the dressing room, mm. wasn't he, privately? But they used that to spur Robbie on. Yeah. And it was the opposite yeah, with true. yourself, wasn't it? That's true. Yeah, I, I, think I remember... I, <laughs> Marshy, getting back to Marshy, you know, when, it's funny, when, when I first signed for Leicester... It was, it was, it was tough, um, you know. Obviously, like you say, following. I didn't help you, to be fair, did I? Well, <laughs> me and you have a strange relationship, Matthew. Let's be honest. <laughs> Where I, I, I like you, and, uh, and I'm not sure. I'm not no, sure. We, we powered out. We yeah. signed a similar time. Yeah. And then uh, Gups confided in me. Do you remember? No, I do. Uh, I do. You explain it. Can you yeah. probably remember it clearer no, well, than I, I do. I, I obviously Simon Portbell. So it's it's, it's um, it, from the Championship to the Premiership, you know, yeah. and we all made that jump, right? Um, and, you know, along with Lenny. Yep. Um, so th that was really nice when you came in because we'd all have similar pathways. We were... Muzzy, Sab, a few others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and it was, it was, it was tough where, you, you know, you've, you've gone to the premiership and there's always doubts, you know, are you going to be good enough and is it going to work out? And I remember, my, I think my second game for, for Leicester, I think just about was, was at Arsenal down at Highbury. Mm -hmm. Um, which Always was a tough. Very, very lonely <laughs> afternoon. But I was, I was cup tied for, and you boys were playing um, Middlesbrough in the final. Uh, I think the yeah. week, week mm -hmm. after, or a couple of weeks after. I was, I was cup tied as well. Yeah. Yeah, but I, so I played because Mickey Whitlow played left wing back. So I played in the in the midfield three up against Patrick Vieira. Yeah, right. Which you can imagine how that went. <laughs> um, and I remember after the game being in the in the bar with my dad, like I'll just going. I'm not sure this is going to work. <laughs> and so uh, there was a lot of self-doubt when I, when I first <coughs> went in there. And obviously, that's um, when uh, you picked me up one day and I was confided in you that um, things weren't going as well as they did for Port Vale. And uh, <laughs> you took a great delight in telling all the lads in the dressing room, <laughs> that, which uh, obviously got to Gary Parker and Parks made my yeah. life a misery for about a month. <laughs> which, which was funny. I mean, we could go on and on about this. Yeah. <coughs> Because obviously I got that the, the nickname. So I'm amazed you haven't mentioned it already. You know, with, you, you uh, tell us for us. Was it Ner nervous, nervous, nervous Norris? Nervous, nervous Norris. Norris, yeah. Which Simon Grayson had. Let's let's get it out. Did there. he? Yeah. Simon Grayson. I remember that? Yeah, Simon Grayson was the nervous Norris. Right. And then when I came in, and he'd gone, he'd gone the villa. No, no, he was he was there for yeah, a year. For a bit. He would have yeah, been right. absolutely delighted that I mm. came on and take that mantle. Take that mantle. And Parks, Parks relentless though, isn't he? Relentless. Upon him. I mean, we all love Parks, but he does get his sense of humour from abusing other people. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> the, 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 you know, that's what, what what drives him on in life, I think. Um, so yeah, so it was it was uh, there's this lad on my case constantly, Parks, and uh, which is obviously we you know a great guy, but at the time. I was just like, wow. Could do without it. And I was, um, I was in the Holiday Inn yeah. in Claridge, who's another individual that's interested. <laughs> he, he rang me up. He liked to like, he liked to like set off grenades in the dressing room and then walk away and watch them unfold. But yeah. So he rang me up and um, said, he goes, I just, I said, oh, yeah, what's this? he goes, um, I just want to say I don't agree with what Parks is saying about you. I'm like, what's that then? He said, um, 
you're, you're the worst signing the club's ever made, and then hung up. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, this is, this is Clary. <coughs> Anyway, right. and I, I'm chewing on it all night. <laughs> I didn't sleep. I was so I got to the training ground. I was absolutely raging. I, was like, I can't believe Park. I mean, he's going too far. You know, my mind. You know, and it, he probably didn't even say it. It was just Claridge. So I walked in the dressing room, and Parks went, "Hey, all right, nervous." I went, "Right, outside now." And he, goes, he goes, "What?" I goes, "Let's sort this out right now." And Parks was shocked. You know, was yeah. like, I was just like, no, we've got to have a fight. We have to have a fight. It would have been like, that would have been a hell of a like strap, Hugh Grant in, yeah. um, in uh, Love Actually, or whatever it was. <laughs> it would have been hilarious. But, um, and he was just like, oh. and he was really upset. Mm. I can't believe, I can't believe you're, you, you know, I'm only joking. Anyway, so what Gary's that did, stirring the pot. he mm. went, Gary was like, really, so Parks didn't talk to me for a month. So, uh, but actually give me a chance to settle in, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, suddenly, yeah, he left me alone. It was like, and of course, you know, I feel, felt bad afterwards, but yeah, that, that's, so that's how it was, you know, we're like, and then, but, you know, and then just things started to settle in and, and away we went, but I obviously still maintain that nickname, which, uh, which to this day, by the way, <laughs> people are still, I couldn't believe, Emil Heskey was on Talk Sport. He dropped it in, did he? He dropped it in. I mean, I didn't know. I'm like, I got some American friends who were like, <laughs> Ringing me up, you know, going, well, well, what's this nervous? Oh, what? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, Emil Heskey was on Talk Sport, and they're like asking about nicknames, and he didn't mention any of his. Not Ivan Poe or anything like that. Finally, he's, bought, he's thrown me. <laughs> Listen, I mean, I don't mind if, if, so you're if, if I bus. have to make Emil Heskey's interviews interesting. You know, we did used to catch you fair. staring into the abyss in the changing rooms, didn't we, every now and then? You did. It's like you were sort of deep in thought, weren't you? Focusing on the game and just. It would go quiet, and I'd give a few nudges. Go look at cups. We got cups there, and you just <laughs> stare at I think that was that. more more Peter Taylor. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, team like, talk, team maybe. Talk, yeah. Yeah. But I um no, I, I was visualising Matthew. I was visualising for the game. No, but yeah, I know you used to. I'll be. It, I'd it, snap it would go quiet, it. wouldn't it? And you go. Oh no! You spotted <laughs> yeah, me again. Right. <laughs> leave I it, Elliot. Leave it. I realised that you caught me again. <laughs> but oh, um, so yeah, that was that was the introduction to uh, sign of Valester. But it was um, obviously. It was, a, you know, went on four or five years, whatever it was, of just fantastic, life-changing experiences where we all sort of did it together, where, yeah. where we'd come from the lower leagues, worked our way up. You know, Crazy very... how it all sort of clicked, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, different characters, individuals, backgrounds, mm. nationalities, whatever. But it's uh, all blended by Martin, basically, wasn't it? Well, it was, and, and I think well, you've got a combination of, of you know, real talented players, but yeah. also a real hunger. You know where we, mm. we we didn't want to waste the opportunity of playing in the Premiership. You know, and I think we all felt like that. Yeah. And you only have to look at this World Cup when you look at teams like Belgium. You know, and how they struggled. Yeah. Fantastic players, but maybe lost their little eye of the tiger a little bit. Yeah. Whereas I think that that time at Leicester, and even as a coach, you always try and tap into that to try and you know just remind the players that you know you you, you first and foremost you got to want it more than your opposition and. And that Martin O'Neill was fantastic at, at really dragging that out of us. Yeah, and, without and, but that. week in, week out to, to, to maintain it. Absolutely. What, what would you say what your standout moments or games <coughs> were then, Steve, at your time at Leicester, if you had to you know, pick one or two of those out? Well, I, I think obviously playing in, in cup finals was, was, um, is, is like you know, your dream. But, yeah. but the journey along there to, um, to get there was, was, was very special. And I, and I think we all... We all talk about the the Aston Villa game. Aston Villa, yeah. Was was a was a, an incredible, you know, game. Not not for the performance, because I don't remember playing particularly well. But we were all nobody nobody played particularly no. well, I don't think. But it was Neither one leg. of those ties. Yeah. Well, we, you know, we were we were struggling with injuries. You were mm -hmm. playing up front. Yeah. I remember that. Um, Steph Oakes were playing, so we must yeah. have been struggling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. I'll Steph. get back, he, mate. He's, he's in. Um, I'm only joking. He, he, he the lives. Final, Steph. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Oaks, yeah. Fantastic yeah. left foot. Yeah. You know, brilliant. Um, but I remember I was I was due to have a knee operation, and you know, so we all had our own little stories. Mm. Uh, Lenin was he was struggling as well? I think, I think really we were really struggling. Um, in Aston Villa, we were, were quite chirpy after the, the, we went to Villa Park, drew nil nil, mm -hmm. and it really. I remember not even doing the warm up beforehand because my knee was blowing up. And I, I, I got called injuries. a square peg in a round hole. By Ron Atkinson. Is that right? After the first leg, I played up front. And yeah. In fairness, it was about right because I didn't play that well. But it was one of those games. Wasn't it? Just yeah, a really round out a draw. 
I reminded Ron Atkinson afterwards in the tunnel. Is that right? I said, I'll see him Brilliant. at Wembley. So uh, I quite Brilliant. enjoyed that moment. Well, that, that, was, that, was, that was special. Although the second leg, I think they really thought Villa thought that we'd have to come out. You know, they, the interviews they did after the game and yeah. all those silly little things that you remember. But um, obviously, when we, when we beat them at Filbert Street um, to get to the final, you know, that was, that was uh, you know, a great Pleasing. memory. It was a great memory <laughs> because, you know, you, to achieve a final, having been cup tied for the the Middlesbrough game, you watch it and you're like, I'd love to be part of this. Yeah. Um, and for us to, mm -hmm. to get there so soon. And we messed up against Tottenham. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Bit of a non-event, wasn't it, that year? And sort of made amends, didn't we? Well, that's sure. the thing, you know, to then go back, what was it, the uh, following year or year? Yeah, after, I yeah. Can't yeah. following year. I mean, yeah. phenomenal, isn't it, really? Three and four. It, it, incredible, incredible. And, and I think that was, you know, I think before that, I remember being um, at Newcastle, the first game of the season when I first signed for them. Um, and we played Leicester and came down here and um, beat, I think, beat Leicester 2-0 or 3-1, two, something like that. Mm -hmm. But Leicester were a bit of a yo-yo club yeah. where they were too good for the championship and not good enough for the premiership. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously that changed when, when Martin O'Neill came in and yeah. we, uh, we, all, we all got to meet. So I'm, I'm going to flip that question on its head then and say, is there any moments or games that we lost or you played in and you lost oh. for Leicester? Like, Again, you're going home, and not a, a, apart from the Arsenal game where you said you played in central midfield, but any other games, say when we all played it on, on the pitch together, where you, know, you thought, I could have done better, or you went home and thought, wow, we, we, we've missed an opportunity. We've already mentioned the cup final against yeah. Tottenham. Any other games? Well, I, I, obviously, that Tottenham game really comes to mind because. Um, of the magnitude of it, you know, it's such a big game, it's such a tight game. Yeah. You know, the Tottenham, who was George Graham was manager then, the way they were, they were a different Tottenham team that we were used to playing against. Yeah. Where they were, they were certainly more defensive minded than, than the Tottenham team that would be, That's you'd be used to. Though, to be fair. Oh no, they? Uh, Ginola and... Yeah, um, Les Ferdinand, Sol Campbell, Ian Walker, who... Yeah. Yeah. Leicester later on they had a few names in there. Oh, no, they well. did. They were still well, obviously it's Tottenham, you know. They and that that's that was one of the, you know, the great things of, of playing for Leicester when you'd see these these teams from London arrive. I remember we played Chelsea at Filbert Street, and like I don't know, was it February time? And they all turned up in sunglasses. And always a good game, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, you always look forward to it, and it was almost like, well, we, we, we can't lose today. They're wearing sunglasses. And you look back now and go, what are you going on about? But, yeah. but at the time. It was that was the way we were, you know. It was just like, yeah, we can't wait for this game. So yeah, I think the Tottenham game mm -hmm. was 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 a tough one to lose in the last minute. Such a tight game. You look back at that. And what think, about the oh, Chelsea game? Better. Did you play in that? I think you did. Early Johnson. You know the FA early on in our time at Leicester, wasn't it? Yeah, I did. Remember, and... we played at Filbert Street, then back at the replay, extra time. Battling away tags. I think it was just before you came. Just before I came. Yeah. I played and in the other one. Erling Johnson has dived, basically, yeah. between me and Spencer Pryor and they tucked away the penalty in the last minute, fuming. And Mike Reed was the referee. Do you remember mm. him? And there was a big consternation about it and people were... Um, Didn't George Weir do the same in the other one? Yeah, half similar. But in this instance, people were taking days off work because of stress was affecting them because of the... The implications of this penalty being given, such was the sort of interest in that tie. But yeah. mm. I'm saying all this, you didn't even play in it. No, I was. <laughs> I, I, I think I arrived like a month later because I remember when I arrived, people were still talking about it. Did you come just after me then? I think, yes, yes. Right, okay. You, you came now. from um, obviously Oxford, and, and I came at, like a little while after you because I remember when you got the move. Um, someone actually sent me a. It was unbelievable. Someone sent me a photo of you signing. Right. And um, cool. and they. Cut if he can do it, you must out. have a they chance. Cut your face it? out and put my face <laughs> on your body. You can imagine right. what that looked like. And, uh, <laughs> and sent me a thing that this could be you next. Some random fan sent it to me. I wish I'd kept it. There you go. And uh, obviously it turned oh, out to behold. be true. Turned out yeah. to be true. But um, no, so I just missed that game. But yeah, that, so I think the Tottenham Tottenham game was uh, was was brutal. But we, we were lucky in that uh, you know there was obviously the two cup semi finals that I played in. We we won both. The semi finals the ones you have regrets. Yeah. Right? Um, and then we're going back, win it the next year. I think, I think Atletico Madrid here as well mm -hmm. was, um, you know, that, that was a disappointment because On the with night the star-studded yeah. team that they had, yeah. we know playing in that game that they were on the ropes. Yeah. Yeah. It was nil-nil with nil, like 30 minutes to go, but you knew you could feel within the game that, that they were struggling 
ridiculous sending off, wasn't it? Well, uh, Parks gets sent off for taking a free kick too early. I mean, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, but that, I, I think if we could have just, you felt a goal was coming and they were, they were reeling. Um, if we could have got ourselves a goal, that would have been a night to remember of all nights. Could have turned yeah. them over then. Well, exactly. Yeah. Got beaten in the next round, maybe. But, but even if we had, <laughs> even to have knocked out Atletico Madrid, you know, and it just felt like that was taken away from us because it was, it was coming, you know, you could, you could feel it. Yeah. Um, but we, we never know, of course. But Just quickly, yeah. I know we're talking about Leicester times. I'm just going to revert back a little bit earlier in your career, just fleetingly, Newcastle. Yep. What happened? Or... What What's didn't happen? What didn't happen there? Because <laughs> on my list, I've got zero games and zero goals. Although I have been reminded that you did come on as a substitute in a, in a cup game. I did. I did. I did play, How long for, play for Newcastle. I came on for like 20 minutes. 20 minutes. It was nil-nil. There you go. It was incredible. We played Man United in the, like the Carling Cup, as it were, I think. Um, and I remember, obviously, Kevin Keegan was the manager of Newcastle, mm -hmm. and he came in. And I was on the bench for like, for like the first time because it was Carlin Cup. So they, yeah. some of the, the younger players, which I was one of them, were, were brought on the bench. And he came in with the team sheet. He said, they're taking the mickey out of us. Go, they're, they're playing the kids. But of course, the kids were Beckham, Giggs, yeah. Neville, mm -hmm. and uh, but I remember all these young players. And so he, he was using that to, in, the, in our dressing room. We had like Peter Beardsley, Andy Cole, you know, obviously great players, Rob Lee. Um, so yeah, that, that was the first thing. And it was nil-nil, 70th minute. And uh, so um, I think he put me on because he wanted someone to hammer. Um, and uh, and I, I, I went on. <laughs> Someone's to blame. I went on and we, we won the game 2-0. Well, wow. I had nothing to do with either goal, but I celebrated like I'd scored them. <laughs> because I, I, think, I think subconsciously I realised I wasn't going to get another chance. No, it was brilliant. I mean, to yeah. play, obviously, St. James's Park for Newcastle. Um, against Man United, and we, we, we actually won that game in the end. Um, what and, what uh, did happen after that? Well, it's funny. Got, got, I, went, I went to see it. It was, it was different, you know, in as much as I was at Wickham Wanderers for four or five years, and we back-to-back -back promotions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my last game for Wickham, you know, was we won at Wembley. We, not, we beat Preston. David Moyes was playing, actually, and to get promoted into the League One. Mm -hmm. And then Newcastle came in for me, and um, they were top of the Premiership at the time. Yeah. Um, and a couple of things happened really. Firstly, you know, once again, it was a, it was a big jump. I've been a pro professional footballer for one year, wow. um, you know, because we won the, the, obviously the Vauxhall Conference, mm -hmm. then League Two, and I was, so I was a pro for the yeah, first time. First time. And I went from there at the end of that year to the top of the Premiership. Yeah. It was a big jump. Yeah. Um, and uh, we used to have like 2,000 people watch training every day and things like that. But yeah. that didn't phase me particularly, if I'm honest, but it was just a big jump. And, um, well, plenty of people to do one v ones with afterwards, weren't there? No, there was always there was always that. In fact, we got in the way because there was just too many. There was no space. But there was um, so I remember going to see Kevin Keegan, um, and I'm saying, look, you know, I just I just want a chance. Did you hammer his door down? No, I did. And, um, <laughs> and I was like, can you know, can you? Yeah. He goes, look, you'll get your chance. Um, I'll make sure it's a home game, good game for you. And I was like, brilliant, fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then a week later, he asked to see me. I'm thinking, Phew, I could be playing. Mm. He goes, I've had a bid from Port Vale. I've accepted it. I think you should go. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like, what? I didn't see it coming. I didn't even know. I'll be honest. I didn't even know where, Port, well Vale, football, where yeah. Port Vale was. Um, I had no idea where it was. They were third bottom in the championship at the time. So um, off I went, yeah, in a bit of a daze. But they, they signed David Ginola like, within a, a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. you know, so, uh, Fair play. So, you know, they, they obviously... Uh, had a reasonable replacement for me, <laughs> but uh, oh, it was it was it was. Um, they didn't have a reserve team at the time either, so I think he was saying, "Look, there's no reserve team. You're not going to play. Mm -hmm. You might as well move on." Um, never a good sign when the manager says that to you, is it? So um, that's what happened. And um, you were a fair play to cups. You, you know, you took a few knocks in whatever in different ways, but you always reacted to it. And you know, not long later in your career. Oh, I'm not saying you were playing on the level that Ginola was individually, but yeah. you were on that level in terms of you know team performance. Well, it, it came around, I guess, you know, and I think and I always say to the players at Nashville because you see it now from a from a distance now is it's a roller coaster ride. Mm -hmm. Professional sports always <clears> has been, always will be, and, you know, and that and that's what we were. You know, we've we, you know always dreamed of being a professional player. So when that happened, you thought, wow, I've made it, 
and even in your league two, it didn't matter. It was a professional player. And then you go up to the premiership and now you sample something completely different, which is, you know, mind blowing. Yeah. And then you're back down to the championship, you know, in Port Vale, you know, the training facilities were, were a disgrace. Mm -hmm. You know, it really was incredibly bad. Um, so it's almost back down to earth, but it's still championship football. Yeah. Um, so that was, it was, there was a lot to take it's on early board. Started, though, didn't you? That's where you really... Eventually, yeah. Sort of cemented your, I don't know, being a professional footballer, for want of a better phrase, was well, it, a Port Vale. Well, it Were came you? down to a, a, another, you know, it's funny it's how it all works out with Bashley talking about, but we played Everton in the FA Cup mm -hmm. when I was at uh, Port Vale. And we, like, we avoided relegation the first year I was there, but then actually John Rudge, who was the manager there, was a really, really shrewd guy, great manager. And he got a number of players, John McCarthy on the right wing, yep. um, Ian Bogey played midfield. Fellow international, Northern Ireland international, John. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. the hostage. Yeah. Bogey. No, yeah. Right he called him Woodstock. <laughs> yeah. He had this funny little, <laughs> little flicky yeah. hair, John McCarthy, so we used to call him Woodstock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It yeah. was a bit like that. Like, Tinsley <laughs> yeah. on the left and Woodstock on the right. <laughs> <laughs> we were, we were, yeah, that's true. Bogey was, he was Newcastle yeah, as well, and yeah, he yeah. must have been a link there, is it? No, no, he was, he was obviously very, very talented, and, and Martin Foyle and Tony Lay. We, we, it was a good team, mm. you know, for, you know, for Martin just Foyle, probably, yeah. we just missed out on the playoffs um, that, that following year, which was a shame, because we were maybe one or two players away from maybe trying to get in the Premiership ourselves. Yeah, yeah. But we played Everton in the, um, in the FA League. Cup, I know, I know. <laughs> But um, it was a, we drew at Goodison 2-2, two, two, and then we came back midweek down at the Potteries there. Um, and I, I, I nearly missed the game because the traffic was horrendous. Uh, if you've ever been to the Potteries, it's all like tiny little roads. Well, obviously, you do. But, you know, the, the little roads. Anyway, yeah. I'd got it all wrong, and I was literally clock watching and moved. So I, I started panicking. So then I, went, I was driving down the wrong side of the road, just like, and I'm just like, I'm gonna, I can't miss this game. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and then I realised that that was stupid. So I parked up and I ran like three miles to the, in my suit with my, <laughs> with my wash bag. <laughs> it's true. I, I ran to the stadium and then the traffic started to ease off after I flagged someone down. It was an Everton fan, jumped in with them. They went for like half yeah. a mile. Then it clogged up again. Anyway, I, I, I arrived at the stadium like five minutes before the team sheets went in. So I was in. So I started and I didn't do the warm up. I just lied on the treatment table, just recovering, recovering you know, having yeah. a rub and whatever. But Martin O'Neill was there, right? And he was there to watch me um, right. as, as a Leicester manager, and we we won that game and <coughs> well, things went all right. Imagine what that Everton yeah. fans thinking. Hang on a minute. I know. Just giving him a lift. And it, it, it was it helped him. I, yeah, I, I don't think I told him I was playing, <laughs> and. Um, but yeah, things went, it was a great game, great night. It was, mm. it was a fantastic night at Port Vale. We knocked, they were the cup holders at the time. We knocked them out. And then, um, you know, a couple of weeks later, then Martin O'Neill rang me and said, yeah. <clears throat> I've made a bid for you. And uh, I think it was like 100 grand at the time and he couldn't bring himself to pay any more. But then it went up to a million eventually. And, and I remember the night before I signed for Leicester, he rang me and said, he goes, right, I've made the final bid. He goes, if they turn that down, he goes, I'm going to sign a lad for... Hearts, I think it was. Mm -hmm. So they wouldn't much sleep that night. You know, I'm thinking, right, I'm either going to Leicester, which would have, you know, I was desperate to, to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Or I was going to be staying at Port Vale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but luckily for me, in all honesty, is that they, the Bosman ruling had just come out. Yeah. Where you, so my contract was running down. And although you, I couldn't have left to Leicester on a free at the time, I could have gone abroad. So I was lined up to sign for a team in Holland called Fortuna Sittard. Yes. They'd, I'd met the manager, Pim Verbeek, his name was. He went on to manage Australia. And, um, I was gonna, I was gonna leave Port Vale and go to um, Holland, potentially. Right. But I was, I was kind of using that as broke. You know, yeah, yeah. Let, I'm, you know, I went to the, the chairman at the time was a, uh, a car dealer in Port Vale, and Burslem. And um, I went to see him and um, to say, look, I'm gonna leave unless you sell me to Leicester. And it was just a funny moment where there was this car showroom. It wasn't, it was fairly big, yeah. but I got out of the car and he must've seen me pull in and he realized that I was coming to say, look, you've got to sell me. And uh, I could never catch up with him. So I'd walk into the showroom <laughs> and I'd be like, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, he'd be like, you know, pretending. <laughs> like, What's that? And he'd, he'd obviously go through a door and close it. And obviously when he closed it, he must've sprinted, sprinted yeah. because I'm running and I can't catch him up. <laughs> And like, we were like, he was going through, we were like, with a mechanic. I say, I say. Like, Can I Mr. Chairman. And he, and he was like, and he, he must, it was just hilarious. Anyway, I caught up with him and they, 
Crazy how it happens, isn't it? Selfish player, you got to sell me. Um, and then, so, so I waited that night and then John Rudge rang me at seven o'clock in the morning and said, right, we've accepted a bid, um, get yourself down to Leicester, so. So it's funny how people Brilliant. don't realise things behind the scenes and stuff, mm. but we've all got our own stories. Yeah, I'm sure, course, yeah. But similar to me at Oxford, in the roundabout way, talking about chasing the chairman. I, I was like desperate to come to Leicester. Yeah, yeah. And they were, I'm in an hour and saying, Before you go to Southampton. Lots of, Southampton was on the cars at one yeah. stage, Crystal Palace as well, it was three of them. You know, it, it happens that way, didn't it? Yeah. All of a sudden, no clubs, and then there were three. But anyway, it got to the stage where I actually went to the chairman's house and knocked on the door about nine o'clock at night. Brilliant, brilliant. And I was like, politely and, you know, and respectfully requested in no uncertain terms, I need to go. Yeah, cool. And fair play to him, Robin Hurley was called, another person who's no longer with us, but he was very gracious and realised then that it would happen. But yeah, the supporters probably don't <laughs> understand or realise what actually goes on behind the scenes at times, oh, certainly exactly. back in the day. It was actually the game we were cup tied for, uh, for the Middlesbrough final. It was with Port Vale, Oxford. Yeah. Yeah, you beat us, didn't you? We uh, we played down at your place in the in the cup. Yes. Yeah. yeah you yeah, knocked yeah, us out. Yeah, yeah. Knocked us out. But um, yeah, that was the reason we were cup tied, eh? Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. I see yeah, what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Strange but true. But um, what about that night? We we'll talk about some funny times. I was going to say at Leicester, on the pitch, yeah, but off the pitch as well. It was always quite entertaining, wasn't it? Um, any sort of standout comical moments <laughs> in your career, mentionable? Well, but, I mean, that was, that was one of them. Take, I might have to take a break here for that one <laughs> yeah, so you can get yeah, the old yeah, cards exactly. turning back round. But that, wow. was, that was a wow. funny time, wasn't it, then? They're talking about the Middlesbrough Cup final when we were cup tied. Oh, yeah. Me, yourself, Ian Marshall, and it became a bit of a ritual yes. going out, didn't it? Can, can you remember what happened? Yes, I can. Burning beaches. Yes. We've been out and when we returned. Do you want to follow it on? Yeah, no, I mean, Marshy did, <laughs> held it against me for years and I didn't even realise it. And I, I was actually, I was, I was thinking I was a comedy genius being hilarious. So we went out, because um, we were obviously cup tied. But we, there was Martin a, insisted we went out, didn't he? Well, we had a, there was a, a, a curfew. Bit of a there was a curfew, yeah. which we missed. We, we were back late. So as we got to the front, so we'd been out um, down in um, Beaconsfield. Yeah. So it was like a late drink, whatever. Yeah. So we got back to the... Burnham Beaches with a lovely hotel in the Sticks. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've probably been there, Tags. And um, old oh, England Hotel. Used yeah, to that's right. Train there before, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. Well, that's just true. Um, so, but it was dark, so we were in like the shadows, looking looking through the entrance. And John Robertson yeah. was at the entrance, like, well, we can't walk straight in because he's going to realise that we're, we're obviously late. We missed it. So we're going to have to climb through the window. <laughs> <laughs> but the window was up one level, wasn't it? And I mean, yeah. Was it Pontus? I think it was, anyway. <laughs> it was Mick Whitlow's room, oh, was wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, which is scandalous, really, because they're playing at Wembley the next day mm. and we're waking them up. Didn't you think it was yours? What time was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he That's right. Gups thought, he <laughs> said, don't wrong. worry, lads, I've left my window open. <laughs> so me, Marcia and Gups right. hammering through That's right. That's about right. half one in the morning. And we get through and all of a sudden there's a shriek <laughs> and a scream. We're like, what's that light goes on? It's Wits in bed, Mike Whitlow. <laughs> We got in the wrong flipping yeah, room, well, he'd left his window, window open. open as well. <laughs> so what they did is that like Marshy and, and Matt like pushed me up. Yeah. So the idea was that I was gonna climb in and then help you that guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I climbed in <laughs> and then thinking I'd been hilarious, just closed the window and went to bed. <laughs> and left <laughs> outside. Thinking oh, that was the funniest thing. And I like, <coughs> then I and but obviously later found out that Marshy was very upset about that. He felt I let him down, but he's forgiven me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, then I went back down to the bar, but obviously coming from my room. No, we got changed into our tracksuits as oh, if we'd right. been in that's all the time, didn't we? Good, yeah, yeah. So we had normal clobber on. Yeah. Got into the rooms eventually, fire wit Wits' bedroom, yeah. then jumped into our tracksuits and just went like sauntering down into reception. Oh, I've only stopped. Where have you just been? Not nowhere, been in all night. Can we have a late drink? And he was like, Ah, you're all right, then. He's yeah. okay, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, he, he'd, he'd been... Well, he'd have been he'd having been, a late drink anyway. Well, it, but, that's, yeah. As it turns out, Tags, I think he was fairly mangled. Up. We love Robbo, you know. <laughs> yeah. And we probably could have walked just straight in and he would have been... The <laughs> sinners <laughs> anyway, yeah. But, yeah that, that's, yeah, that was one of the stories. But I think that, that was, it was a massive part of our time at Leicester. Where mm. I guess we were the last of the dinosaurs, really. Yeah. Where, where Martin used to encourage it, though, didn't no, he? No, I, I, I mean, think... Martin would give us a curfew and say, anyone in before yep. that time is fine a week's wages, isn't it? You know, we, we had to come in oh, after yeah, the curve. Do you know what? And, and it's funny, now, now at Nashville, 
we, you know, we, we were like, I was talking to a lot of the, like the captains, some of the senior players about togetherness and that. And because of mm. COVID, and, and the lads haven't been socialising. Right. And, it, and it, we've noticed it. We've noticed in, in, in so, certain moments in games where maybe the togetherness has not been quite as evident as it was with, with us, you know, yeah. and, or, or any team <coughs> where you, where you socialise. So actually this next season, you know, we we'll certainly be looking to encourage players to, to go out more, yeah. to so socialise more. Does that involve drinking alcohol? Well, I, Steve, I think or? I think it probably will do. Right, right. Okay. But I, I so doubt if I get an invite yeah. these days. Yeah. But but yeah. but I think it was important. But but there is a flip side to that. Is that mm. when if we lost, I remember there was one one time. I think the only time in Leicester we lost three on the spin, mm. and it was like a big thing. You know, I remember Martin and I had a, had a meeting about it, and they're like, you know, and 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 I think we all did sort of wind our neck in a little bit there. It was like, hold on, we can't be going out now. You know, let's let's. Mm -hmm. yeah, Whereas, the you know, I remember being at other clubs early in my coaching career where they were big drinking culture up north. Without mentioning yeah. the team, <laughs> and um, and they we we were on a, a losing run and they still carried on drinking. There was no cut off. Right. I remember thinking that's, this is wrong, mm -hmm. you know. Whereas we certainly enjoyed ourselves, but you needed to win, and we all recognised yeah. that, you know. So Absolutely. there was there was limits. One leads to the other at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, you win a game of football, it's a license to go and enjoy yourself. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. Yeah. No. Martin, and Martin was great at. But it's important to celebrate, isn't it? You mm. know, in yeah. whatever way suits that yeah. group of players. Yeah. You know, because it's that sense of achievement, isn't it? I just think it's quite refreshing that you're encouraging players like to go out, socialise, have a few beers. Yeah. Well, I, I, I in in this day and age, where it's... It? Yeah, I mean, it has changed, of course, you know, yeah. with, you know with, the, with everything, the diet, and, and there's so many things at the players' disposal now. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's one thing we have recognised is that because of the COVID restrictions, lads don't socialise as much yeah. as they used to. And it just felt there's a slight disconnect um, certain moments in the season where you really need that togetherness, yeah. you know, because you know, obviously tactics and shape and you know and position specific, all this stuff that you know we all love to do at Nashville and, and every club, I guess. You need all that, of course you do, but then every now and then you do need that something else that where, the, where you've got to try and find a way to win, which was obviously one of Martin yeah. O'Neill's big, big, big statements, wasn't it? You know, you've got to find a way to win, um, and so you need that togetherness, and you know that's something yeah. that we've. But it doesn't have to be achieved via alcoholic gatherings or anything, which whatever suits those players. Yeah, yeah, it, um, certainly a bonding, certainly a bonding. Absolutely. It used to be encouraged. Really important. Just not go-karting, because that was a waste of time. That's another, <laughs> we'll, we'll save that for another <laughs> yeah. another uh, podcast episode. That was a waste possibly. of time. Yeah. If we get Mickey Adams in the hot seat ever, yeah. go we'll karting. come around to that one. Hey. It's a Disaster. So, I know. mean, other than your time at Leicester, in fact, let's speak about, um, how it fizzled out. Yeah. <laughs> For well, want of a better word, yeah, sorry. No. Well, there was, a, there was, but it's always a bit of comedy and everything, you know. It was a bit of funny, you know. <laughs> well, it well, didn't fizzle out, mate. You got to move to Celtic. No, I did. <laughs> no mean move, of, but of course, you know, which was obviously absolutely incredible. Funny enough, there's um, a player at Nashville who we sold last year to Montreal. But there's a lad that you know will work with a, a great deal. He's just signed for Celtic. Um, Alistair right. Johnston. He was playing for Canada in the World Cup. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Um, he just signed for Celtic, so I've just been talking to him. You know, he's going through that that moment of wow, I'm going to this place, and yeah. what's it going to be like? <clears throat> so, um, well, obviously, as you, as you know, Martin O'Neill left for Celtic. Yeah. Peter Taylor came in, um, and took an instant dislike to me straight away. <laughs> basically, <laughs> See, I thought you would be his type of player. Yeah. I, I, I don't honestly don't know. You know. Uh, Obviously, as a player at the time, it was you know selfish, and I was like, well, you know, this is why I'm not playing, you know, blah blah blah. Yeah. But you look back now, and you go, okay, well, that's fair enough. You know, you're you're a manager, you've got your own ideas. I think he wanted to play the wing back role, but he wanted more of a defensive minded uh, wing. You know, he thought right. that maybe that would be the way to go. Um, and obviously, Callum signed Callum. Yeah. And of course, if it's his signing, he wants to play him. So looking back now, I, I can see it's fair enough. Um, if that's the way you want to go, but but it wasn't it wasn't just the fact that you know I he didn't fancy me. I wasn't even sub for his first game. You know it was like play every game under Martin Hill. Mm -hmm. He comes in, boom. Fancy. I'm not even really. Sub, which, what first game? Yeah, Aston Villa. We played Aston Villa here. Yeah, right. I remember he pulled me on the and day. Of the game. nil nil. Board it was, draw. It was. And um, 
and he's like, I don't you're remember not, you're you not... being excluded no. to that degree. Well, that was the thing. It was, it was, it didn't actually. It's the way he broke it to me was funny, really. It was like, you, you're not, you're not, you're not playing today. I went, okay, no worries. Well, I, uh, yeah. I'll get a chance. Come on and maybe prove you wrong. He goes, no, 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 no you're, you're not. You're not, <laughs> you're not you're not today. <laughs> no, no. Uh, oh right, you're oh, not right. allowed in the car so park. I'm not no. even. No, so it, that was like, wow. And um, that's I strange, isn't it? I mean, well, well, but, why would you do that? Like, someone like yourself, who's been a consistent performer. You know, a very high level for Leicester over a long period of time. That's managers, man. You know, but I wasn't alone there. I mean, if you remember, Tommy you know, himself there. Tony Cotty, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, Parks, Walshie. and, and, and Walshy were all like got bounced. And, and if, if anything, it Tony Cotty was way, isn't there? Tony Cotty was a, was a probably his biggest mistake, really, because Tony was scoring. You know, yeah, you know, had it in him. double figures every year. Mm -hmm. You know, and to lose that straight away was probably. But the, but the funny the, the funny thing was is that so I obviously went home after that it was all you know you can imagine like I thought right I'm gonna have it out with him Monday morning in the training ground go on cops and uh, <laughs> just stuck in there I, I mean it's just it's, it's, you, you laugh when you and I, and I had it in my mind I wanted to be at the training ground before him don't know why <laughs> so I was li like literally in the training ground car park about seven a.m. And I just and, uh, and he 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 bowled in about I, gear on still. I was like I was probably going afterwards, uh, but I um and he I remember he he came in in his car about half seven and he's like he's double taped me like that and I'm mm. like yeah that's what I wanted. So he and he so he, he knew what was coming, so he he walked into his room and then five minutes later I'm knocking on the door mm. at eight o'clock. He's like, right. were you tapping, or were you well, I can't. banging? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember. Oh, anyway, so I went in <clears throat> and I'm like um. You know, what is it? You know, what, why? And, and, um, and bless him, he was like, there was a, a magnetic board on his wall mm -hmm. in, the dress, in, his, in his manager's room. And he, and he got up and he started, he goes, look, Steve, we're, it's just, we're, a, we're, a, and he was trying to look for the words. He's moving around. He's, we're a better team when, when, you, when you're not in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exactly what he said. He couldn't find the words. Right. He said, we're a better team when you're, and I just, we, we looked at each other and then burst out laughing. Both <laughs> completely diffused the situation. It was almost like, wow. In a, in a, so that was really, you know, the beginning of the end. I, I did play some games and, mm. you know, and it's funny because some of his ideas, you know, at the time were like, wow. I think he probably tried to change too much too soon. Yeah. But now a, a lot of the stuff well, that goes on now, yeah. were, some of the things were his ideas. You know, yeah. it was just it was just wrong place, you know, wrong time. Wrong team. Yeah, wrong team. Wrong absolutely, team. you know. But yeah, that, that so that's um. Total change was really... of approach, wasn't it? I mean, yeah. Without going too deep on the Peter Taylor subject, I mean, yeah. When he left things as they were, we were we actually did, we top did. of the league. Yeah, <laughs> correct. Not saying we'd have stayed there. Yeah. But well, we didn't. A certain amount of game. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we didn't because <laughs> things bizarrely started yeah. getting changed. Yeah. When we were doing well, doing what we'd done for years. But anyway, that's for another episode as well, maybe. Yeah. So uh, I um so obviously Celtic came in, but I was gonna go to Coventry. Gordon Strachan was uh, the manager and they, they matched the bid. So I went down a bit like we were Southampton, I went down and spent the afternoon with, with Gordon, sat in his room and, and chatted about what he wanted to do and um but then obviously Celtic and Martin mm -hmm. O'Neill. Yeah. It was too big a pull. So yeah. I, I rang him at the airport when I was just on the way to Glasgow. I said, look, I'm not coming, but thanks anyway. How did um, he take that? Gordon? Well, he said all right, but yeah. I'm sure he would have been suitably peeved, I guess. Mm. But, They'd um, been interested in the work, under, wouldn't they? Yeah. Especially you know what? for you. You know what? There is a tinge of regret there, but, you know, when as much that obviously you're going to work with, you know, the gaffer and, and Wally and Robert again, you know. But, yeah. but it was tough. It was really tough in, at Celtic. First and foremost, a fantastic team. Yeah, you know, amazing team, team. At the time. amazing right. team. Yeah. You know, really was. You know, playing in the Champions League mm -hmm. instantly. It was like wow. Um, and the thing is, they used to win every week. So yeah. if you were in the team playing, it was the greatest. You know, um, you go every every team you played. It was a cup final for them, Aberdeen or whatever mm -hmm. it was. So it was, in, you know, an incredible atmosphere. So it, I guess it would be like playing for Man United in the Premiership. I guess. Yeah. Every, it was everyone's cup final. So there was. You know standards uh, that you needed to like, you know, live up to. Some I guess players there as well, didn't you? Well, you look, you know, on the time I played, you know, I'm putting in crosses to Henrik Larsson, mm. Chris Sutton, and John Arson. Yeah. You know, the three of them in the box. Jeez, you know, it'd have been hard to put a bad cross in. 
with them three, the movement of them three. Yeah. Um, but when you didn't get in the team, when you slipped out, and I was, I was in competition with Alan Thompson and Bobby Pear, mm -hmm. and Jamie Smith, in fairness, who, um, who worked at Nashville, funny enough. Yeah. Um, and um, so it was, it was when you slipped out of the team, it wasn't just that. It was really hard to get on the bench because there was a rule at the time where they had to have so many... So many homegrown players. Yes, That's right. yes. so literally there's only two spots up for grabs. Mm. And, you know, and sometimes, you know, there's people like Lubo Moravchek, who was a fantastic player, yeah. you know, fighting out with Stylian Petrov and Paul Lambert and Lenny. Yeah. So one of them would miss out. And then, you, you know, the defenders, it, would, it, was, it was really, really tough. There was a lot of players who, who never even made the bench every week because of this reason. So I didn't play anywhere near as much as, as I'd like to have done, of course. Um, and, I, and I struggled with that, to be honest. Yeah. I was, you know, used to playing every week. Well, that's um, it. You're at a stage much. in your career where you, you even expect yourself to play every week. Do you know what I mean? You've got that experience, yeah. that yeah. time. You've got a couple of medals or whatever under your belt, a couple of promotions, whatever. And you think, I'm not playing at, what, 32, 33, and you're not playing football? No, no. it was tough. It was really tough, and you know, and, and I guess I've been fortunate looking back. Where I was Wickham played every week, Port Vale played every week, Leicester, you know. So it was it was a shock to the system, but ultimately, I didn't play well enough, you know. And, mm. and that's that's the nuts and bolts. Like you say, they were a good team. They were some players. They were a good team. You know, we like got to the, the you know, you wait for cup final. final and, yeah. you know, I was at it. It was it was. Uh, I was probably yeah. I was probably sat next Porto, to you, wasn't it? Yeah, Porter. in Seville, in Seville me it? and Paul McAndrew, the current kit man, still yeah. with us there. That's right, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. He was, he was stealing a living, even yeah. back then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Macca. He's still ticking along. Macca, yeah. fair play to him. Incredible, isn't it? He must have improved. <laughs> <laughs> he's got, he's Only got, joking, he's got three or four assistants. I was going to say, he's got a couple yeah, yeah. of sidekicks to yeah, help yeah. him out now. No, no, brilliant. No, he's, he's obviously a great Macca, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it was what about that experience, you know, for cup final? Well, it, well I mean, my experience was in, in, in the, the getting there. You know, I played in a number of games. I remember playing against Salta Vigo at, at, at Salta Park. Um, I can't remember what round it was. And, and, and that, was, that was phenomenal, you know, playing in that, the, the atmosphere. The, the European nights at Salta Park are, are incredible, mm. they really are. So that was great. Then we played Liverpool. Um, you know, so we knocked out some really good teams along the way. I am um, unfortunately I had a, uh, I got injured in around about the quarterfinals at a like double hernia operation. So I was like, struggling really. Um, but you know, to, to to witness you know that run and be part of the early rounds, I guess, and the, and the final itself, Porto final. Jose Mourinho was manager. Yes, right. We spoke about, and they it just felt like they were. I don't know if cheating is the right word, but it was it was a lot of diving, mm -hmm. a lot of feigning injury. I remember their their goalkeeper, you know, was was down for like six minutes at, towards the end of the game because it was right. really tight, yeah. you know. Um, and they were, they had their nose in front, down for six minutes, and you see video replays, and no one was in like half a foot of him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's holding his face like he'd been kicked because a bit of a melee, but no one got near him. Six minutes, you know, so it left a little bit of a bit of taste in everyone's mouth, to be yeah. honest. Um, but that was the way football was going and, and probably has gone in yeah, ever since yeah yeah but that was a, the first real sign of that sort of you know that sort of play but they were obviously ideology yes so that's the word is it true, you did, is it true you didn't come out of your hotel room for three days after your uh, champions league game against the Ajax? oh yeah oh you have done your <laughs> research jerry well done mate <laughs> Is that true or do you it's wish not Jerry, it was true? Believe me. Well, it, <laughs> All right, well, it wasn't. So what? Happened? So I, obviously I'd signed for Sarah, but obviously that was in the summer, and um, so pre-season here at Leicester, the, the second season under Peter Taylor, I didn't really play pre-season because mm. I knew I was on my way. So why would he play me? You know what I mean? So so I arrived at Sarah Park. This is my excuse. I'm just getting it in. And um, my first, within a couple of days, I'm playing at Sarah Park against Ajax mm. in the Champions League qualifier. Um, and there was a, a lad, I can't remember, I think he was Kenyan. He was an a Ajax right winger. Anyway, he was rapid. He was, he was uh, everything I'm not, basically. <laughs> and um, he gave me a little bit of a doing, I have to say. Right. And at the end of it, <laughs> we, we managed to beat them. Um, but... No thanks to me. I tried my hardest to lose out. Yeah. And um, yeah, they're, they're, they're obviously, you know, you 60,000 passionate Celtic fans. Mm -hmm. it, it felt like 60,000 were booing me after that game. It really was bad. 
um, so that was a bit of a shock to the system. Um, so yeah, I was I was living in a hotel and, uh, and I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know if I slept. No, I slept. I think I slept under it <laughs> for a couple of days. But um, no, it was just like wow. But it just I needed to get fit, settle down, yeah. and, and um, you know, and it was it was it's funny that that place is it's like a goldfish bowl. So after that game, you're walking downtown, and you know the, some of the fans would be reminding you how bad you were, which you know they they really are not backwards in coming forward. Forwards, yeah. But then the flip side is is then you know settle in a few weeks put a few crosses in, score a few goals. Yeah. Now they're coming up to you to tell you how, how much they like you. So yeah. it's, it's a double-edged sword, as it were. But Press but yeah, the harsh up there as well, aren't they? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it is. It's another level of, of, I don't know if fame is the right word, but, you know, you go out in Glasgow. Scrutiny. Yeah. Scrutiny, that's the better word. But it was, it's basically, you're either Cervical Rangers. There's, mm -hmm. there's nothing else. Exactly. So everywhere you go, you know, uh, you know in fairness, I was a squad player, but even, even that, you felt that... that the intensity of it all—you really did. I mean, goodness knows what it was like for people like Henrik. Yeah. You know, um, but um, yeah, it was—it was. And Lenny. Yeah, well, obviously <laughs> Lenny. Lenny, in Lenny a way. like a doctor, Lenny, one, Lenny, Lenny. Yeah, Lenny uh, thoroughly enjoyed it, of course. <laughs> but he, um, but no, it is. It, well, it wasn't. Surprised Lenny came uh, through it. I was uh, going to say unscathed, but that's not. Uh, the well, same. no, but he came <laughs> through it all the same. Case, but yeah. <laughs> well, Lenny, Lenny lived the dream. So, Gups, we're coming towards the end of this <laughs> chat, little okay. uh, combo that you'll be glad to hear. Well, very, very nice. And in the experience that you've had with us two this afternoon. Yeah, well, you... it's funny how life turns out. You'd never have thought that I would be sitting with you two going through my career. No, well, absolutely. It's you know, been fascinating. I can't think of two people I'd but Le one less, less <laughs> expect that to happen with. One <laughs> part of your career we haven't mentioned yet is... Yeah, coming on to, uh, and it's all lurking there in the background, but it deserves a mention. Yes. England. Okay. Situation. Mm. One cap wonder. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Thank mate. you. A cap's a cap, after all. One more than most. Exactly. Have you one got the cap? Most. Yes. You weren't sure then? It's, it's, um, it's in a loft somewhere. <laughs> I, I, know, I need to find it. Now I'm, now I'm back. From yeah, oh, right. First time I've been back it. for three years because mm. of COVID and that, so... Yeah. I will be digging it out because um, obviously it should. Uh, you know, yeah. It's not like it's, it, it is wrapped up in all the rest. Yeah, yeah. I was a bit disappointed because I thought when you get it, you get like the Queen gives it to you or something like that or you know, back in the day. Yeah. Um, I got it through the post. It was a bit of an antithetic. <laughs> but so no, it was... Never, how did it come around? Experiences and oh. any disappointments or frustration? Oh, it was just the one. Who there was, was a game against, stuff like that. Who was okay, well, hungry, wasn't it? It was one of those moments in life where you remember where you were when it happened. So I remember finishing training. I'm driving back towards um, uh, yeah. Counterstorpe. Uh, well, oh, right, right back home, Yeah, yeah. And uh, the phone rang. I'm driving along. It's John Robertson. And he rang up to say... You'd be thinking it's a wind-up, wouldn't you? Well, a little bit. And he was yeah. like, just, he goes, you know, he's like, you're, 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 in, the, you're in the England squad. Mm. And I, my first sentence was, when I said, like, is Muzzy in as well? <laughs> Always thinking of other people, <laughs> and and, uh, and even like Robert was like, no, what, why? And I was like, no, all right. I was just, I think I was in shock. Mm. But obviously, Mozzie went on and had a great Turkish career, of yeah. course. But at the time, he was, he was me, him, yeah, he was and Emil, where yeah. the three of us were were being pushed for England. Mm. So yeah, so that was obviously incredible. Um, and I went away, and you know, obviously Kevin Keegan, my old manager at Newcastle, was. Uh, was the manager again, so it had gone full circle. Mm -hmm. um, so we played Belgium. Uh, obviously, I played, played wing back. Belgium, that was yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, not Hungary. Sorry. We uh, having a moment there. Yeah, 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 just trying to recollect. So, uh, so we, I think we won the game, two one. Um, I think it was two one, and um, yeah, we were obviously phenomenal. And it was, it was funny. I remember lining up. Um, for the national anthem, because in America, every game yeah. they play the national anthem, they're like, it's just non stop. Whereas in, in here in England, obviously, you only get the national anthem for cup finals or mm -hmm. playing for your country. So that was a big thing. You know, as a kid, you go, oh, you play for England, they're doing a national anthem was obviously a thing you, you're really looking forward to. Yeah. So I remember being stood there with the England kit on, lining up uh, the national anthem going, and I saw my dad up in the crowd. Wow. Um, <coughs> you know, my dad, as we spoke about from the from the days in the back garden. I mean, home and away, every game, Wickham, Port Vale, Leicester, mm. he went. 
mm -hmm. know, as, as your dad did, uh, you yeah. know, and, and you know, all family members. Fantastic. So it's funny, we, we looked at each other, we could see each other from a distance, and um, you know, you think, oh, was it an emotional moment? But we, we actually both started laughing because <laughs> it was almost like, how was yeah. how how this <laughs> happening? Yeah. How has it come Look to this? Me. I had that with my dad a few times. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> How's it come to this? Yeah, it, 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 it was phenomenal. Because um, I, when I obviously played for Leicester, whenever, whenever on the odd occasion I'd score, I see the, the, the videos come up on, on, like, on, your, on your birthday, they, they Leicester put on Facebook or whatever. But I'm always going off to the, the Foss Inn. You know where the restaurant was? Yeah. My dad had a hip operation, so he was in on the sofa there. You remember mm. the sofa? Yeah. So you, if you see me score a goal, I'm always waving up like to that corner because I'm just waving at my dad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we he started Sorry, laughing. Maybe you score a goal first, mate. Yeah, I know, I know. It wasn't, it wasn't for many. But, uh, <laughs> it used to happen regular. <laughs> no, I did say the odd occasion. <laughs> but um, so that was that was it. We won the game. It was it was great. And um, so then we we played Scotland in the playoffs for the Euros, and I was in the squad again. And uh, and I thought I'd stay in because he mm. said like did well. You know exactly what we are. Anyway, I was, we played at Hamden first leg, and I wasn't sub. I didn't make the team. Um, but then he pulled me afterwards and said, Scott look. has got two. He did. I was yeah. due to be in the Scotland squad for that, right. but I'd been suspended. Wow. Again. That would have been something, wouldn't it? Yeah. But, I mean, what, yeah. what a play. I mean, you know, you get obviously uh, to train every day with these guys and, and Paul Scott, what, what, you know, fantastic finisher, you know, in the shooting drills and that. Mm. Yeah, I remember, wow, you know, there was a couple of things. David Beckham was always, always give every shot, give the goalkeeper the eyes. You know, when you're looking at things, you know, he's like always, and, and then, but, Paul Scholes never missed the target. He scored two goals. Um, and uh, Kevin Keegan said, we're playing Scotland, obviously, at Wembley a few days later. We're 2-0 up. It goes, uh, you're coming on at half-time. Just let you know. You get your second cap. You're coming on at half-time. Get yourself ready. So I'm like, Oof, yeah, OK. Um, and then Don Hutchinson scored. Mm. He scored that, uh, at, at Wembley, which wasn't in the script. Yeah. So at half-time... We're one nil down. We're we're winning, but Scotland have been far far superior. Christian Daly nearly scored late on, didn't he? Do you yeah, remember that? I do. Well, close range yes, header. Yes, yes. Um, so he didn't put me on. He didn't put me on because obviously we yeah, you know, it, 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 everything had changed. <coughs> so, um, and I remember a minute to go, he looked along the bench because he was going to put a sub on just to kill time. Yeah. And I was sat next to Ray Parler, and, and he was Ray, get ready. He would have put anyone on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think. Uh, well. That's maybe a bit harsh, but but anyway, I, I didn't I didn't come on I didn't come on. Well, come on and concede. You but don't even, want that one, do you? No, of course, <laughs> of course, of course. And anyway, we we, we hung on and, and for a win and you know we qualified. But it was a bit of a an anti climax for everyone. I think they thought Scotland had played well at Wembley that night, mm -hmm. and so it was a bit of a cloud. But they qualified, um, and I I I actually got, I got injured a couple of weeks later, had a knee operation. And, and that was kind of the end of it, really. That was my little period. Yeah. Because after yeah. the game, so I know I didn't put you on, but we got games against Argentina. I think he goes, he goes. So you get your chance. You get your chance. You know what I mean? One of those. I got injured, and uh, I think he he resigned a few months after or something mm. like that. Yeah, so that was the end of it. So Timings, isn't it? It's pretty, you know, border, especially when you're a borderline player or yes, trying to establish yourself, aren't you? And then yeah, like yeah. you say an injury at the wrong time, and someone comes back from injury, whatever. But Frustrating, but exciting times, though. Isn't it? No, it was. It was. That is, like, no, chaos I, with Wembley and stuff. And oh, it was. It was. It was amazing to be around. Um, and you know, I remember it fondly, of course. But you know, uh, you know and then they, they, this book came out, One Cap Wonder, and I got my own chapter in it. Um, yeah. I'm and a came it, to fame. Yeah, but what about no. knocking about with Beckham's and Skulls and all that business? Yeah, this, no, it was a, you know. It was, and obviously David. Another time to chuckle to your dad in the crowd. No, it, it was. That? It was funny. It, it, it was. It was all a bit of a blur now, I guess. Did you swap winger stories about how you cross the ball in with your left foot and him with his right? Well, I was. All, I was. I was giving him some stick because at Man United he didn't have to beat anyone. He'd just get <laughs> yeah. the ball, and, and I was like, Leicester, I have to actually earn it a little bit. <laughs> um, so uh, you see him when you're over in America. I have. Do you know it. what? Because obviously we play Miami, and um, he one of the games he was there. Um, but I was doing a warm up, and I see him in the corner. You know, I see him just stood around. But of course, yeah. you know, he's just like mental how how, how popular he is. Um, and by the time I finished the warm up, he, he was gone, off kissing kissing baby somewhere or something. I don't mm. know. <laughs> um, so I didn't I didn't get to see him, didn't get to speak to him. But um, no, he's he's uh, he's a phenomenon, I guess. And you have an interesting fact about about your uh, England career, Gox. Our England careers. 
Go on, Haven't you? Go on, Jerry. What's that then? Well, apparently it says here that you're the only player to play for semi-pro, uh, under-21 England semi-pro, the England B team and the England senior squad. Is that true? I believe so, yeah. No, that's true. That's true. No, but that, that kind See, of that could be a chapter in a book strange, as well. well it's, yeah, it's funny. I know. I, I do. Well, at least a sentence. I do get some stick for being a one cap one. I get it. Um, you know, obviously, if you play only once, normally means you didn't play very well. Mm. I, I thought I played all right, but it was. I, I guess the reality was I wasn't getting any younger, and uh, it all came. But but if you think once again, not playing Timing, from sixteen, didn't, <laughs> didn't kick a ball for two years, yeah. and then you say. You know, eight years from then, you'll be playing for your country. country you know, yeah. that would be, you know, an absolute joke, really. So, yeah, I'll take it. One cat, one. Uh, but, but the story that, that I, my personal journey, mm. you know, it was, it was, you know, incredible, really, that it, it came to that. Finish off then before we well, say Well, it just, it came to my mind Erica when, um, so obviously when we won the MLS Cup, fantastic, um, and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, the following year, you get, they don't give you medals, you get a ring. You know, like at Kingpin, you know the, the yeah, 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 Super um, Bowl, or Super whatever. Bowl. Yeah, Super yeah, yeah, Bowl and, and it was it, it was actually really, really cool. Um, once again, not sure where it is, but I think it's in the <laughs> loft next to the cap. You know, what, um, do, do people walk around with it day to day? I think, well, it's just too big. It That's is like we were, like we were laughing because we used to watch that film Kingpin yeah. on the on the yeah, 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 bus on the way on the other It's funny. That's why I mentioned it. But so, so yeah, so you go to the White House. Um, and Obama presents every player and, and coaching staff with this ring. So um, it, was, it was amazing. So that, that happened and, you know, he was really good and he took time, shook everyone's hand, congratulations, bam, bam, bam. And it was, it was lovely. And then it, there was a, a live thing going, a live thing going out across America where he talks about the team for five minutes. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we went out on the White House lawn and there was a lot of servicemen's kids came in and we put on a coaching session. You know, had a little kick around on the White House lawn. Right, brilliant. You're looking around, you see all the, the snipers up on the roof and all that. And it was, it was funny because years later... Had uh, your dad been with you there? That would have been another <laughs> time for yeah. chuckle. No, he wasn't there. Like, <laughs> we, we, we no, were there no, on that no. occasion, but no, but yeah, it would have been funny. <laughs> but So years later, I'm working for Ireland and you know, we've got, obviously working with Mull and Neil, Roy mm -hmm. Keane, Seamus McDonough and, and, and Roy... For, uh, I think I can say this when we like go. You know, we're talking about who's the most famous person you can meet. Yeah. But of course, I'm, I'm used to working with like the Gaffer, Roy. I mean, they, their their football career was just you know incredible. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm thinking I could win this. <laughs> I, I, so I'm like, yeah, go on then. For, for, for once, I was like, I've got a chance. Yeah. yeah. So so I started off straight away. I went, yeah, Obama. You know, you know, American president. Bang. I think I'm, have some of that. <laughs> <laughs> then Seamus goes, well, I've met the Pope. Pope. Yeah. Oh, Seamus. Oh, Pope. Seamus is out like, there. The Pope, the Pope. Before the other yeah, two. the Pope, you know, probably. So we're like, oh, they're okay, second place. We'll let the Pope, you know. And Roy, Nelson Mandela. <laughs> you know I mean? yeah. So, yeah. I didn't even, I got third place. Third place. Obama. President Obama. You, but you top Martin then. I, I, I'm sure the gaffer. Would he probably didn't involve. No, he wasn't it? involved. I don't want to embarrass. He him. wasn't involved in that in that occasion. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so uh, even Roy outdid me on yeah, that. Yeah, even yeah. that, but uh, that was funny. But Brilliant. but that was that was a really nice nice thing um, with winning the MLS that you got to do that. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a nice touch, isn't it? That was fantastic. So we're talking about touching, we haven't even touched on your international coaching career there, the yeah. Republic of Ireland, etc. Well, it was... It, it, give, us a, give us a brief sort of... It brought back a lot of memories of the World Cup because we, we qualified. It, it was, it was, a, it was a, an incredible period, really, because, the, the, you know, the press are like, like up in Scotland, you know, mm. they're vicious, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, it, like... But the actual team, you know, was mainly a lot of premiership squad players and, and championship, championship players. Yeah. I mean, what the what Martin O'Neill achieved and Roy achieved with that team, I think it was incredible. Mm -hmm. But there was always this undercurrent of, of hate, it would seem, from the from the press. It was weird, but but we qualified for the Euros in 2016, which was just a, an unbelievable experience. I mean, on the route we beat Germany. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you know, uh, and I know they they struggled in this World Cup, but they were really good then. Mm. You know, I think they were like reigning champ. They were, obviously it's Germany. Mm -hmm. We beat them in Dublin, 
1-0, um, you know, which was unbelievable. And then um, we we got in the playoffs and we beat, um, um, who did we beat? It was like, we had Panic played for them and, and Dzeko up front. So um, Serbia? Was no, it? no, no, it wasn't Serbia. Bosnia, Bosnia, was Bosnia. Was it Bosnia? <clears throat> I don't know, Steve. Yeah, yeah. We've, you you were coaching there about the game, yeah, not me. Oh, well, I've seen me at Bosnia. Yeah. With all the yeah, yeah, but so anyway. Put it right. on my toes. Well, with your, you know, with your <laughs> research, Jerry, I was <laughs> slightly disappointed. No. Yeah, sorry. We obviously beat... Research team. We obviously beat Bosnia. Um, and that night, I remember, it was just one of the most amazing nights I've ever experienced to qualify for a major tournament. Mm. So it was in France. And, and, and it was like incredible security because obviously there was a lot of terrorist attacks, which was awful. Um, but our, our security for the hotel was just, I've never seen anything like it, which almost made it all the more memorable. We, we had a, like, a, a, like a, um, a special forces guy who was pretending to be one of the squad. Right. So he was getting on the bus with us with his, with his wash bag or his boot bag, but he had grenades in it. And, a, and, a, like, an, and a, like a machine gun. Yeah. And he, was, he had an Irish kid who looked like he was one of the players, just in case it all, all it went bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, we got in the group. We, we drew with Sweden at Stade de France, you know, 80,000. It was like mm, a massive time. We, we, we got smashed by Belgium, very good. It all came down to the final game against Italy, where we had to beat Italy to qualify for the next round. Yeah. And... Um, you know, we've, it was a famous win. We won one nil, and it was it was just one of those games. Will it happen? You know, obviously it was nil nil, so close. And then we got the goal towards the end. <clears throat> and the, and the thing that w it was just phenomenal. We qualified for the next round. We played France, mm -hmm. who were the host nation, in the next round. Um, but I remember being in the dressing room after the game, and a lot of the players were crying. You know, and, and I never experienced that. We've always been, you know, everyone's absolutely buzzing to get the cup finals or big games, and it's such a. But it was. When it's your country, you know, and especially a country like Ireland, when they qualify, it meant so much to the players mm -hmm. that they were, a lot of them were crying. I remember thinking, wow, this, this is another level. Um, so those, those memories will stay with me forever. A absolutely incredible experience. Proud and rightly so, so. Why not? Rightly Why so. not? Right, we're going to change things up, Gops. End of the show time, little bit of trivia for you. And this section is called Desert Island Foxes. So basically... <laughs> <laughs> you're, mar you're marooned on a desert island and you're thinking, how am I going to survive this? And you've got three ex Leicester City players to bring with you. What jo who the who are going to be first, why, and what jobs are you going to give them to look yeah. after yourself? Well, I could have done with this island after my Celtic debut. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, probably, if I, I'd probably still be there. <laughs> um, oh, three players. Not easy, is it? No. Think about what you need to survive on a desert island. I'm pretty sure one of them won't be Gary Parker. <laughs> <laughs> or Ian well, Marshall. Well, it might be Parker. Or Marshy. Mark's put a bit, I mean, Parker's Get your put, own a bit, back. put a bit of timber on these days, so mm. if we're struggling for food, <laughs> you know, yeah. might be worth putting on the you know, roast. He might, he might put him on a spit. <laughs> um, <laughs> it wouldn't take Sav because he'd eat himself. Oh. So uh, that, that'd be no good. That'd be no good to no one. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, oh, f Have a oh I don't know. So who would you get back then? Who's the Sav? hunter? Who would, who who would go out for you? Yes. Well, I'd be the fisherman, of course. Fisherman. There oh, you'd you need me. Um, you take yourself, would you? Well. You've still got to have three others. No, oh, I know that. I know that. I'm run just, out of I'm fish. So you stick him on the spit. Who'd go and gather the firewood? <laughs> we were sticking parts oh, on the spit. Yeah, yeah I like okay. that. I like that. Parts is on the spit. Yeah, we'll, we'll put parts on the spit. Um, he, he, what about he, catching he, land animals? Who, who would be quick enough or agile enough? Well, I'll, tell you, I'll take Matt. Yeah. Because obviously being the plant eater, <laughs> he could he could work out what leaves we could eat and not. Yeah. That'd be important, yeah, the vegetation. Could, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, he would. He'd be around in the... And he'd be able to meet the, obviously, Get to the upper branches, the upper <laughs> echelons of the tree. Yeah. So we could harvest the leaves. So Matt, you're coming. We, we didn't yeah. touch on that story, did we? But no. uh, it's too late now. Yeah, yeah, yeah there, there is a. Yeah, I, I, I think story that's that. good enough. Um, well, might be three I'll involved. Take, no, there's only two so far. Okay. One more in there. I'll take. I'll probably take the birch. Yeah. Because um, because <laughs> he's you know his stories and that he'd have, he'd have, yeah. he'd have you sleep at night. You know? yeah. So uh, he's like he's like a human sleeping pill. I'll take the birch. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs>
Absolutely brilliant. You'd be happy to get a mention one way or another. Oh, I love the, the birch. birch and I love the birch. And I'll leave one last little bit, and I'll leave that to Matt. Leicester phrases. Now, you might have a better chance of uh, getting these correct. Okay, so three words here. Leicester terminology, phrases. Oh, well. Wow. Do you know what a croggy is? No. I called it a groggy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Gerald believes, not a groggy, yeah. a croggy. A croggy. A croggy. No. Not at all. No. Go on. You've been away from far too no, long. No, I have. Son, haven't clearly. You? A croggy is when, I'm saying that I believe. Did you know what it was? Is, yeah, I actually thought my, my uh, understanding of it was a croggy was when you give someone a lift on your handlebars on a, on a bicycle. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, right, right. It's, it's on the back. On the back. Oh, yes. okay, right, right. Okay, right. officially with Leicester, but from my. So if I'd grown up as a kid in Leicester, I probably would have known that. Yeah, what would you have called that? I used to call it a backy. Yeah. Just a backy. I think you're right. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah, our yeah, southern yeah. roots, maybe, yeah, yeah. going on there. But sure. uh, a croggy is what it's called. All right. Well, right. Failed, failed now you know. Failed now you know. Way. Now, if someone's being mardy, what are they being? Yeah, um, like annoying, angry. I know that. Yeah, moody. Moody, moody, moody. Yeah, moody, moody. Right. yeah, yeah, mardy. Yeah, you yeah. got it right. Third yeah. time. Yeah. Third time, correct. Mardi, yeah, that's pretty general, isn't it, that yeah. one? Yeah. And the last one, it's caused a couple of problems before when we spoke to people. Go on in. Jitty. I'm guessing. What is a jitty? Does that mean, uh, would it be that you're a little bit... No, what is a Oh, jitty? Uh, a jitty. There's a little bit, oh, of, a clue, right, a little bit of assistance there. Oh. Jitty, you're thinking nervous. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> a jitty. A jitty. Jitty James. <laughs> Not nervous, Norris. Jitty James. Uh, what is a jitty? A toilet of some sort. Mm. I was going to say that's not a bad guess. But mm. It's not that good either, is it? A jitty is like a, a side or back lane. An alleyway. Alleyway. All right, no. Parallel no? to no, a no. garden, possibly. You've, between um, two houses. You've done me there. I, I, I had no idea. No? No. So one out of three. Not very good, son. No, I was expecting no, no. more from you. Mm. Well, sorry, a croggy and a jitty. I mean, yeah. I'm not sure you can hold that against me. <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's the Nashville equivalent? <laughs> <laughs> what, back alleyway. Yeah. You've had some brilliant times, haven't you? You know, you think <laughs> from those humble beginnings <clears throat> in that career and you know, your time in England and up there and the, the passion and the the excitement of the, you know, being mm. north of the border and then on another, across another border there, it's been mixed and varied, hasn't it? And, and now you're really are far away and expecting, you know, it, enjoying and experiencing, you know, another culture, another environment. To well, it's, it's, it is a roller coaster ride, but, you know, me and you both know that we've, it's not much fun working on a building site. You know, mm. we did that. Um, so to be a pro for nearly 20 years, I guess, and now a coach for however, however over you know, 15 odd years, whatever it is, you know, I'm obviously really fortunate to um, to experience that. But I, I do, you know, go back to my dad's influence and say, well, actually, I'm you know, I'm not, I'm a position specific coach, and you know, and I, I think that's becoming more and more in vogue now. Yeah. Whereas mm -hmm. I've been doing it for like last 15 odd years, so you know, that's. I think that, that, that from those early humble beginnings where my dad was probably a position specific coach with me, yeah. we didn't even realise. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they'll just take that, run with it. There's plenty of things in coaching I'm no good at, but, but those, the 1v1 stuff I really enjoy and, you know, and it's taken me on this journey as a player first and foremost and, then, and now as a coach. So, um, yeah. you know, I, I've been really fortunate, no doubt. But you have, but the harder you work. Yep, so the luckier you get. No, that's it. You know, the, the obsession is, is still burning brightly. <laughs> so uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Good man. Steve Guppy, thank you very much. Pleasure. It's been excellent talking to you. Nice one, Gupster. We'll meet up socially as well soon, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. Brilliant. Good to see you, pal.